Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We are here in the F-15. We're going to be taking on a group of hostiles, uh, Super Hornets and F-16s armed with AMRAM Charlie-7s. And they're going to be fighting me in the F-15 and I'm going to be shooting at them AMRAM Ds, AIM-120 Deltas. So let me uh, have a look at this radar here. Uh, you can see the range at the top is 20 right now. I'm going to punch it out to 160. Use that powerful F-15 radar. And we are in TWS mode, track while scan. And from these two numbers you can see at 160 miles right now I am scanning between 0 and 60,000 feet. So I'm looking at a massive portion of the sky. RWR over here is indicating to me that there are F-18s, Super Hornets, right off the nose, bearing 340 for uh, unknown distance right now. I don't have them on radar, but I know they're right in front of me. We're climbing now through 20,000 feet, and we are slightly below Mach 1. The main reason I want to do this is I just want to see how much of a difference the AIM-120D will make and how much of an, uh, of an advantage it'll give. Uh, we got him on radar here at about 100 miles, 96 miles. I'm gonna fire one AIM-120D, Fox 3. <laughs> and we're just gonna see if that missile can hit a target. Um, that circle you just saw expand on the HUD there and these two lights here these are the shoot cues, so they're telling me you can shoot right now. So technically I shot before the shoot cue, but it should be fine. And we're just going to continue to hold the lock, providing guidance information for that AMRAM um, until it goes pitbull, whenever it decides is, the, is a good time for it. It's worth mentioning that that AMRAM was fired in TWS mode or track while scan. Uh, this means it's also called, you know, sometimes people call it a soft lock and a hard lock. TWS is a soft lock. So they don't actually have any kind of like RWR notification right now that a missile has been fired. And they won't until that missile goes pitbull. So until it decides it no longer wants guidance from the launch aircraft, this F-15, and it switches over to its own radar. At that point, they will get the RWR notification, but theoretically, it'll be way too late at that point. Let's, uh, we lost lock here. So that AMRAM, look at that, you see that vector there turning away? That's a bandit trying to defend and he's gone. So those little lines coming out of the front of those uh, bandits on TWS show you the vector. So we actually just saw that guy turn away from the formation to defend, and he just got smoked, just disappeared off radar. All right, Fox 3 times 3 on the rest of the formation. So we just scored a kill with the AMRAM uh, Deltas at 96 miles. That's when we launched. I think it was. So, pretty impressive. Makes a big difference. There's no way the Charlie variants are shooting back at me. And you can see how much of uh, an advantage like the range thing really can be. Uh, one of the biggest complaints about the AMRAM is that it's not a very long range, which is something that is called a medium air-to-air -air missile, right? But that's kind of what the AMRAM Delta was trying to solve anyway. Much longer range variant of the AMRAM. And as you can see, it makes a huge difference. Those guys can't even fight back. I'm cranking here to the left because we're now entering 
a mar where those F-16s can maybe shoot back at me. So we just need to slightly defend. That guy just disappeared off radar. This is the AIM-120D experience, I think. You just lock guys, you shoot them, and then they just start disappearing off radar. <laughs> You're just like, all right, there it goes. You don't actually ever see any kills. You see that vector, and then it disappears. As he tries to defend there, he turns away and then just disappears. Um, so according to radar, we still have one bandit at 36,000 feet. Let's see what we got here. One, oh, we got two. Another one at 35,000 feet. There we go. Got them both locked. We'll turn into them now at 35 miles. So once we shoot, we're going to have to defend here because we are now entering the MAR against their AIM-120 Charlies. Fox 3, Fox 3. And now we can start defending. We are 30 miles, 29 miles, now entering the Mar. No problem. We're off cold. And those uh, bandits at 35 and 36,000 feet basically don't stand a chance at this point. They're almost guaranteed to die. And we'll go to attack view after this and see what happened. There you go, splash two up high. That's everybody, man. AIM-120D is, uh, <laughs> makes quite a difference uh, versus the Charlie. Huge advantage. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, do a TACV review here. We'll jump over here. As you can see, we have a bunch of Hornets, a couple of F-16s. Uh, so kind of like different threat ranges. You know, when you have... The Hornets aren't going to have the engagement capabilities of the F-16s. And again, that's because the F-16s are so much faster. They'll be able to engage from a further distance than the, uh, the Hornets will. So it kind of makes the F-15s job a little bit harder, but not by much. And you'll see why here in a second. Um, I'll try to discuss some concepts of BVR here. Um, so one of the things that you're going to see is everyone's climbing up to high altitude. Again, we've talked about this in the past, but the reason for that is you want to get into the thinner air so that when you fire your missile, your missile has less drag, less friction. Um, and then you don't want to hang out up there though, right? Because when you hang out up there, it means the missile that they shoot at you now has less, less drag, less friction to try to hit you, right? So you need to shoot your missile and then leave the high altitude go back up if you want to shoot another one kind of thing uh, so basically that's what's going on here we are about 97 96 miles i think right around here is when we shoot this uh first aim 120 d there it is okay and 26,000 feet and she's off and you can see that it's kind of lofting itself so the missile is once again climbing into even higher altitude on its way down. So it's going to get really fast. And uh, mock speeds are actually a function of temperature as well. So when you see it reaching tremendous uh, mock speeds here at Mach 7 or something, that might be a little too much for the AMRAM, but um, you have it at 57,000 feet and climbing, right? So that AMRAM is absolutely lofting itself onto the target here at about 87 miles and then you'll remember on the radar so if you remember um what did we have this is like the radar screen right it was a little box and you have bandits i apologize for that box <laughs> it's awful and you had your bandits being shown like this so on the F-15 radar, the dashes are hostiles, circles are friendlies, okay? 
and this is when you're in range uh, sorry range while scan this is how they'll display when you switch over from range while scan to track while scan which will come up as TWS at the bottom of the radar screen um, you'll actually get a vector indicator as well so it'll give you this little line showing you which way the bandits are moving and so that's what you saw on that thing right so when you were looking at my radar screen I was in TWS mode and you could see the vector showing which way the bandit was going and then you saw like after this missile started getting close to him uh, the little vector indicator went like this all right so what it, what the bandit was doing as we were reading the radar screen um, and oh yeah and up here is the range right 160 miles so what the bandit was doing was he was trying to defend so he starts cranking away or diving away or turning away and then he just disappears off radar so you know he's dead right so you can literally read what's happening by just you know understanding how to read the radar screen um, so that missile ends up going all the way in and we'll look at these guys so again these guys have no idea that there's a missile coming this missile is in track while scan so it's still using guidance information from the F-15 to stay silent, essentially. It's going to switch over to going pit bull right at that second. You saw that F-16 that F start defending. Um, it'll go pit bull when it decides to, or once lock is broken with the launch aircraft, it'll turn on its own radar. And right here, you can see it turns on. Not, well, you can't see it, but here's what happens. You see this F-16 all of a sudden start defending because he starts getting the RWR notification he's like oh shit. And he starts diving right he drops his tanks completely not expecting to have been engaged from 96 miles away <laughs> and just starts cranking and gets smoked by that amram and imagine being in this formation and just seeing one of your guys just get absolutely schwacked and none of these guys can see anybody on radar right now so they have no idea what's going on they probably are receiving rwr notifications um or like pings from the direction of the F-15, so they know they're fighting an F-15 in that direction. But, you know, that's about all they know. They don't know, they don't actually know the ranges, technically. Unless they had an AWACS that was, you know, telling them. Uh, which you can see we don't have an AWACS here. So at about 60 miles, a little bit more than that, I think it was like... What, 66 miles, we fired three more AMRAMs at these guys. And that F-16, once again, defending, smoked by two AMRAMs. The other Hornet smoked by two more AMRAMs. It's just, you know, they stand no chance. Now here's what it is, though. Here's the crank thing I wanted to talk about. So at this range, at 60 miles, you'll see me start cranking. And the reason is that one of the bandits is an F-16. As far as I know, there's still two of them up here, right? I don't know. One of them got killed already. Uh, and these guys are capable if they were fast. We've done this in other videos, so I know the capabilities of the F-16. Um, if they were fast and up high, they could shoot an AMRAM Charlie, which could, if I don't defend, hit me right in the face when I'm least expecting it. So that's why knowing that I'm inside of you know, launch parameters of the Charlie variants to the F-16s, I start doing a simple crank maneuver. The crank maneuver, which is this, implies that you are continuing to provide guidance information for the AMRAMs at the gimbal limits of your radar. Okay, so your radar, this is the nose of your aircraft. Uh, boy. This is... We'll do like a top view. This is the cockpit. <laughs> okay, this is the cockpit. This is the nose of your aircraft. Inside of this nose is a dish. Which is your radar screen. Or your radar dish, right? It's like this. It doesn't actually look like this. It's a representation. So, this radar screen will turn this way and this way. ASAs won't do this, but, you know, these, these versions of the radar will they'll look left and right. They'll scan, right? So when you're illuminating a bandit who's, let's say, over here, the radar will be like this. 
and it'll be staring at him, turned off to this direction. And the gimbal here that allows the radar to be turned in this direction to lock this bandit, this is called the gimbal limit because it's a limit because it can't go any more than this, right? And so that implies um, locking the bandit at the gimbal limit of the radar. How, at the same time, you are turning away. You are forcing any incoming missiles to turn to try to hit you. Missiles have finite speed, therefore turning away is forcing them to defend. Is forcing them to bleed their energy to try to hit you. Um, so you're actually defending any incoming missiles while staying offensive yourself, providing uh, guidance information for your AMRAM. All right, so the crank is a very good maneuver. You can't do it once you're very close because it's not a, it's, you know, you need a, it's not a massive defensive maneuver, I would say. It's kind of like a, it's a simple one, very basic, just before you enter into the MAR kind of thing. Anyway, so these AMRAMs end up hitting these two and they're dead as well. Okay. And then what we're gonna do. At this point, I'm watching the uh, radar screen and I'm seeing two more guys defend, disappear off radar. We're gonna recommit onto the last two guys and fire the last two AMRAM Ds. And then at this point we are inside of 30 miles at 30,000 feet. So now we are inside the MAR, whoops. Now we are inside the MAR at 30 miles. MAR, minimum abort range. This range changes based on altitude, okay? Up high, it's 30 miles. On the deck down here, it's 10 miles, okay? That is because we're, when we say MAR, it's the turn, it's the ability to turn and run from the missile. Okay, that obviously changes based on the type of missile, the altitude at which the missile was fired, and the speed and all these other factors. But obviously altitude's a big one, as the density is lower at lower, or is, sorry, the density is higher at lower altitudes, the missile range is lower. Therefore, the MAR is smaller, it's 10 miles. Up high, there's less friction, like we already talked about. Therefore, the MAR, there's less drag, therefore, the range of the missile is more, therefore, the MAR is larger at 30 miles, right? Um, so at 30 miles, I'm like, okay, we are inside the MAR of the Charlie 7. These ones are carrying AIM-120 C7s. This is horrible writing with this mouse, I'm sorry. And even C5, okay, C5, same thing. Um... 30 miles, we're gonna start defending. The C7 might even be like 32, 33 miles, something like that. So we're off defensive here. Um, the reason I feel confident about it is just because of how fast I am. You can see I'm Mach 1.2, so I know if I turn away now, um, I can defend no problem. And so these two guys, before they even get in range to fire their missiles, get smoked by AM120Ds. Although they were probably very close to getting into range, so. And that's it. So you can see what a massive, massive advantage the AIM-120D provides and why it's a big deal to have missiles that outrange your opponent. You know, it's, it's kind of a big deal when you see it in action like this and how much of a force amplifier it can be. All right, guys, uh, that's going to be the video for today. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.